I don't see something on the market that I want, so I'm gonna make it myself. I actually really wanna make unique things. I really wanna make things that are not gonna be produced probably more than 20 times, if that. This is Michelle Rose. She's an independent clothing designer and artist. She works alone, handcrafting her pieces straight out of her bedroom. This time, it's a pair of pants. <laughs> this is starting completely from scratch because I know it's going to be a bit out there. And actually, pants are kind of hard to drape. After studying fashion design at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, Michelle landed a well-paying job in Los Angeles' garment district, where she worked for nearly four years. Coming to L.A., I just really wanted a job. It didn't really matter. I didn't really know what I was getting into. And the kind of stores that we would sell to were like Target, Kmart, JCPenney, like Kohl's. I ended up becoming pretty depressed because I felt like I was spending my entire day doing something creative but not utilizing my own ideas. And I would find myself feeling like I was wasting my time. On the side, Rose designed her own garments. Then she began selling independently at craft shows and online at Etsy.com. And they also have a whole line of articles that they call quit your day job, which I started reading like right when I was, you know, like thinking about quitting my job. What would need to keep me going would be probably average like two sales per day. I mean, there are people who sell 20 things a day, you know, it's possible, it can get there. It's getting just gradually, gradually better like as time goes by. Local boutiques have begun carrying her designs. Echo Park Independent Co-op is a store in Echo Park where we feature local independent designers from the LA area. It's more like an art gallery. They're designers and they're designing fashion. I just consider that to be a form of art, which not everyone does. With Michelle, she's so local, you know, she does stop by and we have so many mutual friends. That's an important part of the community that we're trying to build here. Some friends were like, oh, you should check out our stuff, and we did to, like, all sorts of interesting people. Lady Gaga's stylist bought one of them. I used to think that I wanted to have a real production company and, like, manufacture a hundred garments at a time or whatever, you know, of each style and, like, really distribute that, like, um, nationwide or worldwide. I'm not so sure if I want that anymore. I feel like I really enjoy this kind of personal, small-time thing. High volume manufacturers are not looking for the most creative or the most original. They're looking for what's going to sell. The California Fashion Association helps connect the Los Angeles fashion industry with big buyers and global manufacturers. But President Ilsa Mechik says that they are responding to the growing demand for local design. We applaud those retailers who want it made locally. And that's why some of our manufacturers are starting to create that label, made in L.A., made in California. And we're very excited about it. But Metric points out that the actual making of the garments rarely occurs locally. Made in China, made in India, it's not really what we're trying to do here. Like We really want things to be locally made, locally produced, to support the local economy. Eighty-five percent of what is shipped from Los Angeles comes from somewhere else. It's designed here, created in L.A., made elsewhere. The Princeton Review, a career consulting company, estimates the odds of becoming an internationally famous designer are 160,000 to one. But Rose isn't aiming for big outlets. She's looking to sell locally. We have 14 schools just in this region graduating students who think they're going to be designers twice a year. That's an inordinate amount of people who think they have the pulse of the customer. In the past couple of years, I've been making some clothes that may not look expensive, but they kind of have to be because of the time that goes into it. When people look at them, they're like, really, is that really worth $100 or whatever it is? You know, I know that people look at them that way. Rose says the time she spends is nothing like the TV show Project Runway, where designers rush their work within a few hours. But high-end fashion hits Los Angeles each year during LA Fashion Week, featuring clothes that retail at thousands of dollars.
These designers have spent years crafting their labels into financial successes. We did a lot of grassroots marketing and building up like a network and a community that supports us. Because you can be the coolest designer in the world, but if nobody really knows about you and if you don't have anybody that's going to come and support you, then it doesn't mean as much, you know? So yeah, we started with the people. I can't put a lot of time into a dress or a pair of pants and then make it out of a crummy fabric and expect people to compensate me for both my time and the material. I want to have a solid, uh, opaque top, hopefully with a little bit Black of stretch. Yolk. Uh huh. And exactly, and then to the bottom, I wanted to be a sheer. Oh, sheer. And I'm looking for black for both. Okay, let me show you both. Okay. Yeah, that has got actually that very like basket weaving, which is nice. Let's just do a swatch. You know, I just have to see what's out there, make sure that. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't want to go to another store in a couple of weeks and then see something that I should have bought. You never know if you're going to find the perfect fabric ever or not, you know? It could be impossible. It could be something that just doesn't exist. Rose travels to several shops to find a fabric that fits her vision. Tu es charmante comme toujours. Bienvenue. Merci. You understand what I said? She's charming. Charmante. <laughs> yeah, I like this a lot. This is the one I was dreaming of. I know. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this is silk, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Italian silk mm -hmm. diploni. Is that is that twenty five dollars a yard? I wish it was double that. $25. Oh, it's on the back. Oh, it's fifty dollars a yard. $50 oh. I'm really. I'm really in love with this. Okay, stay in love I with it. I feel a little crazy though. I know. $50 per yard. Well, you know, beauty is not cheap itself. <laughs> yeah. And it's Italian. Yeah, let me check one more time. Capiccio Italiano, no? <laughs> Look at the mirror. Yeah. That's yeah, it's going to be so beautiful. Okay. Let me do this. Before I go ahead and buy it, let me just get a swatch. And compare. Yeah. And, work. and compare, just Absolutely. in case. Absolutely. A viento. A viento. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the challenge right now is that it's just that fabric that I like a lot is so expensive. I do want them to be nice, you know, I do want them to be of good quality. And if, I mean, they might just be really expensive that I don't know if anyone's going to be able to afford them. With a tough choice to make, she returns to her home studio to weigh the decision. It's not looking good in terms of how much fabric I'm going to need for it to be $50 each yard. This is the linen, this is $20 a yard. This is the silk, this is $50 a yard. What I'm going to have to do now is just cost it out and see how much I'm going to have to charge for these things. It's a little scary, but I can always go down on my margin and charge a little bit less. It would just mean that, you know, I'm making less profit per garment. And this is where it gets really tough being a small designer because I can't get wholesale prices. So I could try doing these at 500 retail. That would mean if I sell them wholesale, I only make $40 per pants. So they have to be very careful what price they're charging on the website because if they sell to a local store and the local store wants a 60% margin, they have to discount it to the local store so that the retail price is the same on the web and in the stores, otherwise the local stores won't buy it. If it's on the website for $100, then they have to sell it to the local store for 40 Rose began her business by selling to local boutiques. It really depends on how much like money we have to spend on each thing per month, like our budget, you know, for buying stuff. Something is telling me that it'll be okay with the linen, but I don't know. I 
That's crazy, $50 a yard. I think that's, that's the one that really speaks to me. Yeah, why it goes to such a high expense, especially to Dave's economy? I know. If you can get the same thing in a different way, look mm -hmm. and value. Mm -hmm. But designers have got to be very careful today because even the rich are not splashing mm -hmm. as they used to splash. Mm. This is quite nice. Well, I'm going to tell them Can it's I way too expensive. Sit on it. I need to get the linen from Mood. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Um, what is the name? Michelle Rose. I feel okay. I just have to forget about that $50 silk. <laughs> it was out of my reach. Always. It might be the perfect fabric, but it's not the perfect price, so can't do it. It is pretty close to what I wanted. I just, it like breaks my heart that I can't use the silk. That's all. <laughs> Rose is designing these pants as part of an eight-piece collection, the first complete line she has attempted. People who appreciate art would definitely appreciate the time that it takes to put into special garments like these. The trick is to be in business. It's not being a one-shot deal. It's taking that statement that you're using from a marketing perspective and moving forward with it, with a whole line. Um, we would go to a lot of events with friends that had similar style of music and connect with people. There's a million ways to skin a cat and there's a million ways to make a business successful. And you're taught, you tend to be taught like one version of that in school, you know, and it's like a mainstream sort of angle on how to succeed in the fashion industry, but there's a lot of other ways to do it. I've been hanging out in the music scene a lot, which is one of my goals is to get a lot of my clothes on musicians. There's a lot of good reasons to hang out in the music scene, <laughs> but I don't know if anybody's going to want to buy these pants. Or even if somebody does want to buy them, what if I don't ever reach that customer? What if I just don't have my marketing down so the people who would buy it never see it? The desire to be local is sometimes an indication that you're too insecure in your own self to get out into the world and you won't be successful. My idea of being successful has changed a lot. Um, I used to of course, uh, with most people, probably think that being successful means having a lot of money or having um, stability at least. To me, being successful is being exactly who you are, not changing who you are in order to be successful. Two months after finishing the pants, Rose moved to a residential design studio to finish her collection. Oh, I don't have to cut on the floor anymore. I use this table. <laughs> it's so good. It's so nice to not have to cut on the floor anymore. <laughs> My plan for this little collection is to show stores that are going to highlight local designers. I really like the idea of staying local. And I always plan on producing my garments in the U.S., probably in L.A. For this collection, I plan on showing a handful of shops, maybe up to 10 shops. Right now, I'm still just doing my design, working on this kind of stuff, selling on Etsy. I'm still living on savings. So hopefully if this collection, if it gets bought, you know, might float me a little bit longer. I'm not sure right now if I'll have to get a part-time job at some point in the future when my savings run out. We don't always have the luxury of having a runway show and professional models. And when you're just starting out and you don't have money, you don't have much of a name, you can't be wasting money on hiring professional models. In terms of upscale designers, when they put on a fashion show, it costs them 100 grand minimum. And they're not really making money directly off of this fashion show. So the point of a fashion show isn't really to sell anything. It's just to build hype. And I mean, really, it's a show. <laughs>